What's up, dog meat? Today, we're going to talk about rational exponents. And I've got some, some good news and some bad news for you. Which would you prefer first, students? The good news or the bad news? Uh, this is the part where you all unanimously say the bad news. Because you guys always want to know the worst part first. The bad news is that the word rational in math means fractions. And if I know one thing about students, it's that your three greatest fears in life are letting your boyfriend or girlfriend look through your phone, eating your vegetables at night, and fractions. But don't worry, there's good news. The good news is I'm going to make an entire lesson video explaining how to do it for you. That way you have examples you can follow and refer back to when you get stuck on homework problems. So even though you have to face one of your three greatest fears, no, not broccoli, fractions, you'll be fine because you have examples and a teacher that's here to help you and nurture your love for mathematics. So let's talk about rational exponents. All right, so we've already kind of talked about this stuff here, right? The root, AKA the index. That's the thing we called it last video. Um, then we have the radicand with some power on it. The way we're going to uh, get rational exponents is we can turn radicals with exponents on them, radicands with exponents on them, into fraction exponents is by taking the power we're gonna make that the numerator, and then we take the root number, or the index, and that becomes the denominator. Pretty simple? All right, so let me go ahead and show you just how to rewrite them first, and then we'll worry about how to simplify them. So to rewrite them, let's go from radicals into exponents first. So here, we have a base of x, an exponent of five and an index of three. So we're going to go ahead and copy our base. So the base is x, put a fraction in your exponent. The power goes on top, the root number or the index goes on the bottom and you're done, that's it. One more easy one. Copy the base, make a fraction. Exponent goes on top, root number goes on the bottom. What if we have multiple bases? And what if we don't have an index? Well, the invisible index is a two, just like the invisible exponent is a one. And then we just do this for each of them individually. So x, we're gonna put a fraction. Its exponent is a five. Its index on the root is a two. For y, its exponent is a one. The root is still two. So this would be how we write this radical with rational exponents. All right, let's go the other direction just to make sure you know how to do that. So our base is x, so we're gonna put a radical, we're gonna put an x inside. The top number is the exponent on the base, the bottom number is the index of the root, okay? Same thing here, x inside a root. Top number is an exponent, bottom number is an index of the root. It works on numbers just as well as it does on variables. Put the base inside of a root. Top number is an exponent. Bottom number is an index. We could actually simplify this one, right? Because uh, you could do negative 13 squared. We could turn this into the cube root of 169. Almost a funny number, but not quite. All right, so that's how we rewrite them, okay? You think you got the idea. Let's go ahead and rewrite them and then simplify if possible. Um, so we could rewrite this. This is uh, eight, its exponent is a one. That goes on top. Its root number is a three. I actually think it's easier to simplify from the root. So this is kind of rewrite and then go back a step and look at the root to simplify. But the cube root of eight is two. So that means eight to the one third power is also two. 
Okay, let's rewrite this. X, its exponent is a two, its root number is a three. Y, its exponent is an eight, its root number is a three. And then this one we could simplify a little bit. Three doesn't go into two, so we're still gonna have the cube root of x squared. Three goes into eight two times, and then there would be two left over, right? Eight divided by three goes in two times, six, subtract two, remainder of two. So this remainder of two, we still have y to the uh, second power inside there. Cool. All right, um, let's look at this last one here. Um, we could do five. Its exponent is a one, so it's gonna be one over the index x. We have x, its exponent is a 2, its root number is a 4, and then y, its exponent is a 1, its root number is a 4. Here, we can reduce this fraction, so we should do that. 5 to the 1 fourth, x to the 1 half, y to the 1 fourth. This actually does not simplify, besides this simplification right here. But this root doesn't simplify. There is no fourth root of five. There, You can't do anything with the x and then you can't do anything with the y because four doesn't go into two or one. So this or this is as simple as we can make that. All right, let's look at rewriting these as a radical and then simplifying. This process makes a lot more sense. Simplifying from radical form is much easier than simplifying in um, exponential form. So that's kind of why we want to do it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply our knowledge of exponential properties, and we're going to distribute this outside exponent to all the exponents inside, including the invisible one. So we have 25 to the one half power, and then we have X to the, uh, fourth power. Okay, so this is as simplified as it's going to get. Let's rewrite this in a radical. So this could be the square root of 25. And then usually I like to put this stuff in front, just so it's clear that it's not inside the root. And then the square root of 25, we know that, right? It's 5. So it's 5x to the fourth. That would be our answer. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this problem. We're going to start by distributing our 1 fourth to all the exponents, including the invisible ones. So we have 32 to the 1 fourth power. We have a to the 7 fourths power. We have b to the 12 over 4 power. And then we have z to the 1 over 4 power. Now we can try and simplify this. So we have, let's make a fourth power here. Because they all have a denominator of four, we're gonna use a fourth root, okay? So we have 32 inside. We have a to the seventh. We have b to the 12th. And then we have z to the first. Now we can simplify this. So we'll factor our 32. So this is 16 and two, this is four and four, and then this is a whole bunch of twos. Remember, we're trying to make groups of four because our index is four. So here's four twos, those get to come outside the radical. There's one left over, so it's gonna stay inside our fourth root. Four goes into seven one time, with a remainder of three. Four goes into 12 exactly three times. And then four doesn't go into one, so this z to the first will stay inside. So here is our answer. All right, not too bad. Let's look at what to do if we have negative radicals. So, if we rewrite this, uh, or actually let's think about this. What did we do if we had x to the negative two power? Well, we turned it into a fraction. 
moved the base and the exponent to the other side of the fraction and then made the exponent positive. So we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna turn this into a fraction. We're gonna move the base and the exponent down. So this is gonna be one over 36 to the five halves power. Now they want us to simplify this. So let's rewrite this as a radical and see if we can make it any easier. So we're gonna rewrite this as one over our bottom number is a two, so we have a square root. And then we have 36 as our base. A handy trick, this five, you can either put on the 36 like that, or you're allowed to move it outside the radical like that, and then do the radical first. In this case, the radical first is a little bit easier because what's the square root of 36? It's six. We still have our fifth power. So six to the fix, uh, fifth power, you just take your calculator, type it in, six to the fifth power, and then we figure out that this is one over 7,776. And then that's your answer. All right, let's try one more. Let's do this one in blue so that we can tell the difference between our work. So first thing we do is take this, move the base and the exponent to the bottom and make the exponent positive. So this is gonna be one over 125 to the two thirds power. Now we're going to turn this into a root and an exponent. So this is gonna be one over the third root because the bottom number is a three of 125. And then I'm gonna put the exponent on the outside again. All right, the cube root of 125. So let's take 125 and factor it. This is five and 25. This is five and five. Because we're doing a cube root, we're looking for a group of three matching numbers. So the cube root of 125 is five. So this turns into, let's go back to blue, one over five squared and five squared is 25. So you're just making your exponent positive like this turning your fraction exponent into a radical and an exponent, simplifying the radical, then doing the exponent. Let's look at a little bit harder ones. These ones might not 100% simplify, but we'll do our best. So the first thing we notice here is that we have a negative exponent. So we're gonna move that to the other side of the fraction and make the exponent positive. So we're gonna have a five on top, and now we're gonna have a y to the three halves on top. y to the three halves isn't gonna simplify, so we can leave it like that. You could also rewrite it in radical form if you want. It doesn't tell us radical form or exponent form, so we could just leave it however. But just in case you care, we could write this as five square root of y to the third, or we could have the exponent on the outside, five square root of y, to the third. So any of these three would be considered correct answers. All right, now looking at this, we're gonna start by using our exponent property to distribute in the negative four. So we're gonna have x negative four times a half is negative two, and then negative four times negative two thirds, negative times negative is positive, Four times two is eight over three. You just multiply negative two over three times negative four. You multiply the two to the four and then just put it over three. All right, the last thing we have to do is make this two positive. So we turn it into a fraction, move the base and the exponent to the bottom and then change the sign. So we're gonna have y to the eight over three over x squared. And this is our answer. All right, these problems are some of the funnest problems. I really like these, these ones are cool. You're, you might not appreciate the simplicity of them, but we'll, we'll take, check out these steps. So step one, convert the exponential, or sorry, convert to exponential form. What that means is this radical, we're gonna turn that into an exponent. So this would be 
uh, x, the root number is a 5, so that goes on the bottom. The exponent's a 2, that goes on top. Keep the rest of the problem the same. Over x to the 7 over 5 equals x to the power of y. Now we're going to simplify using the rules of exponents. So when we're dividing, you do top minus bottom exponent. So you're going to do 2 fifths minus 7 fifths, top minus bottom. 2 minus 7 is negative 5, and then you keep the denominators the same when you're adding and subtracting. So this is negative 1. So x to the 2 fifths divided by x to the 7 fifths is x to the negative 1 equals x to the y. So if the bases are equal, the exponents have to be equal. So the bottoms cancel basically. Negative 1 equals y. That's the answer. All right. Let's look at one more of those just to make sure we understand what we're doing. So first, we're going to rewrite the radical as an exponential. Let's keep the top the same. So we have x to the 8 over 3 over the exponent here is a 1. So we're going to have x to the 1 over our root number is 3 equals x to the y. 8 thirds minus 1 third is 7 thirds. We have x to the 7 thirds equals x to the y. The x's cancel, and 7 thirds equals y. And that's your answer. Not too bad. I like those ones. Those are kind of clever. All right. Hopefully that wasn't too fast. If it was, go back and watch it. It's a video for a reason, kids. I don't record these for you to watch them one time. I got to get those clicks on YouTube, right? You think uh, Raid Shadow Legends, the sponsor of today's video, just kidding, is going to ask to sponsor me if I don't have those 2 million clicks? Get clicking, kids, right? That's only, what, like 20,000 clicks each? You just have to watch the video 20,000 times each, and then we're going to be in the shmoney. All right. If you have questions, hit the WebEx. Say, Mr. Barton, please help me. Help me. I need help. You didn't explain it well enough in the video. You went too fast, and I couldn't find the half speed button on YouTube. And um, to be honest, I didn't really watch the video because I don't care about my grade. You got to help me. Go to the WebEx, ask for help if you're confused. Until next time, have a great day.